Well, welcome back, you two. Well, what's on the agenda for the day? I got a little bit of catfish in there, and I thought for the day, I might cook up a catfish too. Stop by the store to get some bacon. And let me tell you, bacon is expensive right now. And I wasn't paying no eight dollars for no eight or ten pieces of bacon. I used to get the bacon in pieces, but they didn't have none in the store. But anyhow, I got some butts meat here. I'm gonna slice up some of this butts meat to go in it, and that's what we could put in our. Uh, I'm just gonna slice this butts meat into pieces and slice it across, and I'll slice it again. I didn't use the whole piece of butts meat. I'm just going to use some of it to put a little meat in there besides the catfish and the flavor it a little bit. I like the bacon flavor. We still have had bacon, but I just wasn't paying that much. I kind of tight sometimes with a dollar. Ridiculous for bacon to be that high. I didn't want the whole pig, just a piece of bacon is all I wanted. And cut up a little bit. Got it diced that way, and I'm just dice it up in some little smaller pieces. A tough piece of bus meat right there. Get all of this diced up. Alright, take our Butts meat over here and put in the pots. If I can get the camera high enough up with it. Get it in there and let it brown a little bit. Make a little bit of juice in there. We'll give it a little bit of flavor. That's my first step when I'm making a fish stew because this is what's going to take the longest to uh, kind of get ready where I want it at. I'd added just a tiny bit of grease to the pan where it butts me wouldn't stick. And the way I got that butts meat smelling right now, if I had me a homemade biscuit, I could go ahead and eat that butts meat right there. <laughs> Miss the days of old, back when mom used to make them biscuits. Ain't nothing like a homemade biscuit. Anyhow, this is about as brown as I want to get it. I ain't want to cook it to no crunch. Get ready to I want to add some tomato juice to it. Let it kind of Cook in that tomato juice for a little while. Let that cool her off some. Let's put that much in there for right now. While I'm waiting on that to come to boil, I'll be peeling me some potatoes. Right, I got about Five medium sized ice potatoes here. I'm gonna go ahead and get them peeled up. Dice them up while I got the tomato juice and butts meat cooking over there. Get them peeled up and diced and be right back with some more of the video. Um, got the potatoes cut up. Slice up some of this catfish right now. Get it cut up. It's kind of thick. Kind of thin it in between pieces. I don't like mine too awful thick, but I don't want it too thin because it's going to come apart once it starts to boil in there. Yeah. 
This, I want this to be the last thing I put in there. And I didn't have a whole lot of catfish. I don't know if y'all remember me catching that that one catfish a while back. But this is gonna be <coughs> what it's off of. It's probably I don't know about two pound of catfish. So I ain't cooking no real big one because it's just me and the wife, so I don't need no real big stew. No, we don't. She loves catfish stew. Just a little bit as soon as I get this cut up. Alright, I was let it simmer a little bit. I had to switch directions, you know, the wind kept blowing my fire out. I was let it simmer a little bit with the tomato juice and the butts meat. <clears throat> now I'm gonna drain the taters. I had them sitting in some water. When you peel these taters, You don't cover them with some water that don't take them long to brown. Go ahead and add them in there. Well, like I say, it's better to use bacon when you're doing this. But I just use butt meat to D because bacon is outrageous. So I just use butt meat in there, but something keeps popping and I'm not sure if it's the butt meat or what, so. Anyhow, we'll make it work. Oh, them taters is starting to get soft. So, uh, ain't wanting to cook them till they come apart. Go ahead and get my onions. Put my onions, and the wife wanted some bell pepper in there, so. She had chopped up some bell pepper. You can go ahead and mix that in there. You talk about giving flavor. Them onions, I usually don't put bell pepper in mine, but I always put plenty of onions. I'm not sure how good the camera's picking up in this shade when I've been cooking under it oak tree here breeze coming through here I'm gonna go ahead and add some salt let it be cooking get that salt in there you want to put too much salt cuz I added that butts meat to it <clears throat> that butts meat was good and salty Go ahead and put some black pepper here. Like that black pepper. Black pepper. Give it a little kick. How about some Louisiana hot sauce? Put a douche of that in there to give it some flavor. To get it too hot that the wife won't eat it. Use that hot boiling uh, tomato juice will kill the uh, hotness of that that hot sauce. But now this it won't kill. And while the wifey ain't looking, I'm gonna sneak some of this in there. If she knew that I put this in there, she'd be yelling. But I like mine with just a little kick to it. I didn't want to put too much because I know my mom's probably going to want some. Just a little bit of that red pepper there. I ought to give it some kick. Go ahead and stir that in good. Let her simmer a while. And I just hope them bell pepper ain't mess up the flavor here because I can smell them bell pepper in there already coming out of it. Out of this. Smells good. But now, 
Like I said, I usually don't put bell pepper in mine, but I know some people that do. But anyhow, we'll see how she is. All right, it's coming back up to boil since I added the onions and Louisiana hot sauce and stuff. Anyhow, I wanted to give a shout out to viewers down around Louisiana and Mississippi and uh, Texas area. Um, there's a system I think coming in there, rain system, and I think it's good. May come up and dump some rain on them like we had last week. And anyhow, I want to give a shout out to them. And I was putting that Louisiana hot sauce in there earlier. Anytime I, I see use Louisiana hot sauce or something, think about Doug Kershaw, the raging Cajun. I used to listen to him when I was a little boy. We'd be picking corn, putting it in the trailer behind the tractor, going through the field picking corn by hand for the horses and hogs we had when I was a little boy. And Doug Kershaw would be on that thing and Louisiana man. Oh, I could pick some corn when he come on that thing. And anyhow, we got this tomato paste in there to thicken the sauce up that's on, thicken the tomato juice up. According to how much tomato juice you have in there, you might have to use more than one can, but this is just a little small six ounce can. It should do because I only got a half a pot cooking today. I ain't cooking no big uh, stew, but I want to get it in there as soon as I can because I ain't want my potatoes to come apart. Because them potatoes, you let them cook too long, they start coming apart on you. Cook too soft. keep stirring that until that tomato paste there gets in there and thickens that juice up some. I don't want it too thick, but I don't want it too thin. Okay. Every minute or so I stirred that tomato paste in there. Now I'm going to add my catfish. I got it cut up in little chunks. And yes, I'm going to put it in there with the bones this time. They don't want to pick through the bones, that's them. But the wife's in there and she's hollering, she's hungry. And she's ready to eat. But the last thing I want to put in here is the catfish. And I ain't wanting to hit the cook, but maybe around five minutes, because it don't take these catfish long once you put them in there to cook or they start coming apart. I'm not sure if you can see down in there or not because this camera don't pick up too good in the shade. But once I put that tomato paste in there, it thicken up the juice. Got the juice kind of thick, that ain't too runny, ain't too thick. I'm going to just let this kind of simmer for about five minutes and it'll be ready to go and we'll be fixing us a plate. Oh, it's almost to get done there now. It only takes them cat, catfish just a few minutes once you put them in there. We're fixing to fix our plates here. Alright, the wifey couldn't take it no longer. She's out here and so you're supposed to put that on top of the rice. She's uh, already fixing her plate. What's the Indianapolis plain I don't know why. Filipinas, a lot of time they eat plain rice. So I got to have something on my rice. That's why we cook the stew. Anyhow, that's how it looks whenever we get finished. That's the way I cook mine. A lot of people do them different ways, but that's all I do a little cooking video while I was out here to dig. And I got to reclean my grill up all over again. Thank you. Is it yummy? Mm -hmm. What's that you got on the, uh, on the cabbage. side? Oh, you cabbage. cooked some cabbage? She's got some cabbage to go with her. 
But anyhow, um, appreciate you watching. Uh, I'm trying to do some cooking or something over here till the water gets back down. I think it's supposed to crest tomorrow. And then starts going back down after then. And it'll be a week or maybe two weeks where I can get back down and do some fishing. Until then, hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the one that subscribed. And if you hadn't subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. And hit that uh, bell icon where it'll give you a notification whenever I put out a video. But anyhow, that's how I spent my day up here under the oak tree here. Breeze blowing. Trying to do some cooking, do something other for the weekend. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Catfish do for the day. We'll try to make a cooking video since we can't get in the river. <laughs>